Hey guys, MC Collector here with another figure review, and next up is the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, Shang-Chi, or Shang-Chi. I honestly don't know how you pronounce it, but Kevin Feige himself said Shang-Chi um, when during the Disney investors call. So how it will be said in the movie is probably Shang-Chi. We shall run with it, and I'm going to say it both different ways to kind of cover my basis and say it right, say it wrong. At least I've said it correctly at some point somewhere so shang chi and the legend of the ten rings this is the death dealer figure now um some of these shang chi figures have been showing up at target they are street dated now for april 25th some of the crazy things going on here is target is receiving solid cases only they are not getting the assortment cases which is the case which is what happened with the venom pool wave the problem with that is some stores don't get every single figure from the wave and getting eight at one time is kind of crap when they can only fit so many on the pegs. So who knows how this one's going to play out. But as of right now, they do not have a DPCI for an assortment case at all. They have them for solids. But if you go into store Death Dealer and Xia Ling, Xia Ling um, these two figures are actually listed as online only, which is why I purchased the two of them on eBay and I will take my chances on finding the other figures in the store. I should have just ordered them all from the same eBay seller, stupid me, but I got the two that I know are not gonna show up at Target. Uh, will they show up at Walgreens soon? Wal Walgreens, Walmart soon, who knows? Again, street dated April 25th, and I'm sure that was planned before when the movie was supposed to come out in July. However, they ha the movie has been delayed and pushed back again until I believe it's September because Black Widow got delayed until July to allow for a theater um, opening as well as the premiere access on Disney Plus. So Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. Here we have our first look at some of the characters because we don't even have a damn trailer yet. It's crazy. But anyway, let's get right to it. I know I've talked uh, on and on for two minutes. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We got the movie logo there. We got some awesome concept artwork right there of Death Dealer. Very cool. I have no idea who the character is, what the character is all about. We get that Shang-Chi like logo there. It's there up at the top too. It's a nice little pattern there. Um, and of course, the build a figure here is Mr. Hyde, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There is a look at the build a figure there. All the figures in the way. So of course, Shang-Chi, Wen Wu, Zai. Ling, Death Dealer, the Civil Warrior, the Game Reverse Contest of Champions, and then we have the Tony Stark AI, which is just an Iron Man figure with a new Tony Stark head sculpt. The bio for Death Dealer reads, Death Dealer is one of the most formidable opponents Shang-Chi has ever faced. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I think this may be the best looking figure of the wave. I know when it comes to MCU figures, it's a toss up on you know the, the figure design, the character design, a lot of people don't like them. I love them. I have not had an MCU figure in so long. We have the Children of Thanos, but essentially those are all reissues or repaints. Um, and then before that was what, Black Widow? So it's been long overdue for me to get some movie figures. So here we go, three and a half minutes into it. Let's get started and take this thing out of the package little zoom in action so you can kind of get a better look at that Mr. Hyde build a figure. There it is. Okay, so here is the Death Dealer figure out of the package and here we have what it is the, what it is. What is the left arm to the Mr. Hyde build a figure and this looks to be uh, the Joe Fixit Gamerverse Hulk uh, build a figure um, with of course different hands and you can see there um, lots of nice detail like a broken um, fingernails right there, or thumbnail. Uh, no paint detail but we do get some um, shading in there for like the back of the hand because it's kind of hairy and that's molded on there. Green suit, uh, pretty cool looking. Um, in terms of the accessories, we get a couple of um, interchangeable hands that we have for the right hand, um, kind of like with the Ronin figure from Avengers Endgame, how he had the Shuriken throwing hands. Um, here we have these dagger throwing hands. Um, so that is pretty cool. You can see the translucent plastic there. So um, it looks like that's kind of glued on or maybe molded with it and then all painted. Nice silver there for the back of the glove. Um, the, the daggers are painted nicely. We get a nice silver paint there, red around the handles. So that actually looks really good. And then here we also get another hand. This is for his left. So where he is holding the blade of the dagger and he's like ready to throw it. So the, here's kind of already thrown from his right hand. Here he's ready to throw it with his left hand. Um, and then one cool thing on the back of the figure, look at that. He's got more daggers, daggers everywhere. 
So that is a nice design. They do not come out though. That is just part of that little accessory clip piece that, that is glued. Um, one thing with the robe, it does not come off. Even though it looks like it could come off, it is glued there. I will not be breaking the glue on this figure. Maybe I'll get a second one to see what's up underneath and I can do a short video or do some pictures or something on Instagram. But in this video, I will not be removing that robe. And yes, it greatly hinders the articulation of this guy. Um, so, um, just keep that in mind, but let's zoom in and take a look at some of the cool things um, about this figure because I think the head sculpt, um, the face or painted on face or face paint uh, does look really cool. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we have our zoomed in look on Death Dealer. Now, I tried to Google and try to get some information the, the, as best that I can on the character from the comics, and I really couldn't get a whole lot of information. I guess he used to work for MI6 and was too brutal for them. So things like that, and Shang-Chi was hired, I think, to, to try and eliminate him. Um, but there wasn't a whole lot of information that I can find. So I, I, I want to see, and I can't wait to see, how the character will be in the MCU in the Shang-Chi movie. Um, we just are going to have to wait a little bit longer to find out, but that's what sucks with these movie figures is, you know, without the context of the movie to see how badass the character is or isn't, um, can help inform your decision on what you think of the figure. From pure figure standpoint, it's a very interesting design, uh, but it is different. You know, the comics he wore all black and had a skull, like, paint mask. Uh, or face paint, I guess, could be. Uh, but they, the MCU definitely changed it up, as you can see here, with the mask covering his face. You got the white paint, and then you got some black and red lines there. Uh, one thing that I really like is take a look at the eyes. It almost looks very creepy, um, you know, staring you down. Um, and I really like the way that looks. I think it looks pretty cool. The, the, the paint apps of the eyes came out very clean. Uh, looking at the rest of the head, you got this nice texture hood piece and mask, cowl. Um, you got the ponytail there with that red, dark red band going around. Uh, looking at the robes, we got a nice texture to it, as you can see, and we get some orange paint um, in there over the blue, um, and it goes throughout the lining of the robe, and it gets pretty sloppy on the back here if you take a look. You know, it's kind of bad. Uh, looking here on the back, we get the knives are sheathed in there. That's not removable or anything, and it's fairly soft. You can, you can kind of move it around, but nice silver paint and red there these red bands there. These forearms are done in that molded gray metallic looking plastic that I think looks cheap that I don't like. They should have painted it because they did silver paint on the back of the hand, but this is the plastic color, no paint. That's not much more Hasbro. You should have painted it on both sides. And then the same with the knee pads. The knee pads are that metallic gray uh, plastic color that looks cheap. Should have painted it. Would have gone a long way. Um, Looking here at the belt, you can see that is that original Ten Rings logo from the first Iron Man movie. So that is a nice little detail and touch. A um, little bit of silver accents in that belt as well. So I like the way that looks. Uh, one thing on the boots, and I don't know how well this will kind of come off on camera, is take a look at that logo there. I don't know what that is. It almost reminds me of like the Rough Riders logo. Um, rest in peace, DMX. I wasn't the biggest fan, but it, it, I did enjoy some of his music. Um... But I think that looks pretty cool. I don't know if that's supposed to be like a DD for Death Dealer or what that is. Um, but it's an interesting design in that it's on both of them there. Um, so there is the closer look at Death Dealer. I want to take a look at that torso piece. But I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to cut open the robe. Uh, when I get a second, you know, I'd be willing to do it. I'm trying to think if this torso piece was reused from something. Because that, that little bit that you can see kind of looks familiar. Um, but I'm not sure and it's just kind of all silver painted because you could see even right there underneath there's some silver but there he is let's zoom out for his articulation okay so we already know that his articulation is going to be pretty limited because that robe is going to hinder the shit out of it I mean he's not going to get any movement in the torso whatsoever is there an ab crunch in there I don't know for sure but I'm pretty sure um, but we, we just can't find out. And again, I, I will not be cutting into it. So the head, you can look way too far down. As you can see there, you can go up quite a bit, actually. And luckily, that cowl piece kind of goes right into the robe so it doesn't hinder him looking up, which is a nice touch. You get some pivot going on in there and then a full rotation. Of course, I would say that it actually sits a little bit high on the neck. I wish it sat a little bit lower. You can get the arms to go up that high and you get a full rotation in there. And there isn't really a butterfly joint, but there's a lot of wiggle room to kind of move that arm but again it is not a uh, butterfly joint you have an upper bicep swivel there you get a double jointed elbow like so wrists swivel and they do hinge 
Um, again, there is probably an ab crunch in there. I don't know for sure. I can't really work it, but there is a waist swivel and you can get the legs to go out that far apart. He can kick forward with his right leg that far. You know, the left is again, gonna be hindered by the robe. So you're not gonna really be able to do much there. We do have an upper thigh cut. You get a double jointed knee like so. No uh, boot swivel or calf swivel. Foot hinges down a little bit, up a little bit. You get nice ankle pivot and peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So uh, very limited in articulation, which is unfortunate because that robe just uh, that robe just takes up a lot of um, the space and just hides the points of articulation to the point of not even being able to use them. So it's unfortunate. Okay, so I want to point this out with the ankle and the shoe because I didn't really talk about this. See how far up that back part of the ankle of the shoe comes? That greatly hinders the. Um, ankle pivot so yes you can get some pivot in there but it just it gets in the way and then just kind of goes right back so you really have to work it so i don't know why the back part of that shoe comes up so high so just keep that in mind swapping out the interchangeable hands is very easy you just pop them off and pop them right back in but you can do some cool things now one of the tricky things is like with the gambit throwing hands the bullseye throwing hands is kind of getting it into a way that kind of really makes sense now Yes, he could throw it and end up looking like that, but you kind of have to work the situation and get the right angle for it to really look like it makes sense that he'd throw them um, in that particular manner, in that particular direction, but it's pretty cool. But I really like the other hand where he's, you know, really getting ready. It's like he's throwing, he's throwing two and he's got that third one back there ready to go. So that is really cool. Okay, so while I do not have the movie Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi figure, I do have the comic version. So here is Death Dealer next to the comic Shang-Chi figure. Okay, so my final thoughts on the figure. I'm happy to have another movie, movie figure, but at the same time, I just don't understand what's going on because we don't have a trailer yet. That's the difficult thing. Now, I know these figures are not supposed to be out right now. There's a reason why Hasbro did not announce the Mr. High Builder figure or the Death Dealer, Xia Ling, Wen Wu, and Shang Chi figures because the movie was delayed. You know, this one was a pretty late delay that kind of came out of nowhere. There was just no time for any toy company, I would imagine, uh, to course correct and pull these items from getting out onto the shelves. It was just too late. Stores, they were already probably in distribution centers ready to go. I saw a Lego set at my local Target already, um, so there was just no stopping it. So hopefully soon Disney will release a trailer. I would imagine they wouldn't wait until Black Widow, you know, you know, in theaters to have the trailer open up um, before Black Widow. We shall see. I don't know. But in the meantime, you guys let me know down in the comments below what you think of this Death Dealer figure. What do you think of the figures? Chances are you've seen the leaks and everything online. You guys let me know what you guys think of the wave. Obviously, the build the figure is going to be the highlight for many of you. I, I for one, are, am loving the MCU figures because I'm an MCU collector. That's my thing, right? Um, I love the movie figures. Um, the character designs aren't always my favorite, uh, but I love the movie, so therefore I love the figures. And I, I mean, I can call out their flaws all day long. Bottom line, I'm still going to love them because I love the MCU. I love the movie figures. I, I, I tend to love almost all of the characters, so we shall see. But anyway, if you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.